Apart from cattle, Zambia's livestock industry also encompasses small livestock breeds that include pigs, birds, sheep, and goats. Zambia's small ruminant sector is also one area poised with tremendous opportunity for growth, emanating from increased demand both locally and on the export market. Although the rate of economic growth could be much better, there is no doubt that most economies in sub-Sahara Africa, which includes Zambia, are growing. A growing economy, especially combined with a growing population, means that the consumption needs also go up. Key among these consumption needs is the growing demand for protein. Small ruminants, such as sheep and goats, as well as poultry, are some of the richest sources of animal protein. In Zambia today, small ruminants and poultry are known to have great potential to meet the growing food consumption needs. In the part two of the livestock sector documentary, we discuss the challenges and opportunities facing Zambia small ruminants and poultry segments. Firstly, let's begin by understanding what the terms small ruminants and poultry are. Poultry is basically a, a bird uh, which has been uh, uh, domesticated. As you know, these birds, originally they come from the wild. Then um, the poultry that we refer to is, 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 is birds that have been domesticated by man for, to rear them for, for, for meat uh, production. And in Zambia today, we, when we refer to poultry, we have the um, chickens, which are in three types, as you may know. Uh, we have the broilers, which are reared uh, for commercial purposes um, up to six weeks and then sold for meat. We have the layers that produce the, the eggs, then we have our um, village chickens. But we also have other types of poultry, um, uh, things like ducks, quails, uh, guinea fowls, um, and, and the ostrich. So those are still four in the, in, in the, in, in the, in the poultry category. Small ruminants, uh, it's a description of the type of ruminant, which is referred as small, small stock, which basically applies to sheep and goats. And as you may be aware, there is over 150 types of uh, ruminants. And these ruminants can be both domestic or wild. The antelopes, the buffaloes, all those um, in the class of ruminants. Now, what do we mean by ruminants? These um, ruminants are um, animals first with a, what we call a full stomach. They have got, it's different with what we have in humans and in pigs, you know. Then the, the other thing is that they have this ability to chew over again, to chew the food. They, 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 they take it in, then they, they regurgitate, bring it back, and chew it again. And that's one of the things which is peculiar about the, the ruminants. Now, for small ruminants, by definition, basically, is refers to sheep and goats. Slowly, the numbers of poultry and small ruminants, especially goats, are increasing in most parts of the country. For Zambia, um, basically we're sitting at around 4, point, um, uh, 4 million um, goats. Um, these are um, estimates from uh, our um, um, survey in the field, but uh, as you know, we are planning to do a comprehensive census to come up with uh, updated figures. We have what we call the plateau goats, uh, which is basically the upland goats, which are distributed all over Zambia and the different provinces of Zambia. Then we have the um, Sinazongo goats, which is quite peculiar. They are called Sinazongo because of the different features that they have. Then you have the Gwembe, the Gwembe goats. Then we have the exotic type of goats, which uh, the Boa goats, the Karari, uh, the Samen, 
which are um, basically used for milk production. So these are imported exotic breeds. Then with the sheep, we're sitting at around 130,000 as, as a country. Yes, the sector is growing. You look at uh, goats from uh, the number of households that are keeping goats from year to year has been increasing more compared to the number of animals each household is, is keeping, like the average number of animals the household is keeping. Small ruminants production, especially goats, is a venture that is becoming prominent among small holders across different districts of the country. Small ruminants, they easily increase in number. They, they have two kiddings in a year. So, and the kidding sometimes, depending on the breed, sometimes twins, triplets. So, in terms of increasing in number, they increase at a faster rate compared to cattle. And uh, in terms of cash, you can make fast cash in terms of income for the farmers because they increase at, within a short period of time. <laughs> Low management practices of the goats have made them not only suitable for the poor, but also a rich source of income and proteins. As in Pongo to Ratariga, Yuvuba, Ulanganyauti, Ima Pensi, and Gaflamaning, Cambo in Ganua, Vuban Pongo, in Gama Pensaro, Atieni, in Gamana. But in my Pensi, I will use Gavanabachuolo. Mapenzi, <laughs> In many areas, Goat production is done by individual farmers and in groups such as women cooperatives supported by various projects and programs. cooperative <laughs> first <laughs> So mutuagaya gamuya, pona toga higula mpongo hili twenty first. Pona second ni waga higutu pa seventeen thousand five hundred. Toga higula mpongo hili sixty two. So ni agama na mpongo hili agata diga guti ya ni neho. We hara na sixty two plus twenty three. Aga higuba our division and evaluate the series and evaluate the series that pull is a five five five. Corner could be more five more. Neru Tirok Tongali Puli, Zeo, Ze five after as Pepide, Neru Zabo Nakwateni, Neru could seize. Charles Secusi Aladi Pulizeo. The Pulize, this year's more Zinzi twenty canakoe. Conoca. Kono kambe kipa aloka ufela, kambe aluskali kiseza kwa te niwa nana kuza kwa skolo. Kambe za kwa na neke ete itikana kwa ye. Goats are also known to adapt to any environment, even in areas with difficult conditions such as the valley. 
uh, the district has a lot of potential. As I'm speaking right now to you, uh, we have a total of 91,000 plus in the district from our updated camp register. So that is the total population of goats. We don't have serious diseases in this part of the district because of the temperature itself, the nature of the place. The temperatures are just too high and they don't support the the survival of the, the pathogens that would actually cause uh, havoc in these uh, small small ruminants. So they are safe keeping goats rather than keeping cattle. And this is why we have uh, more goats than cattle. However, lack of proper market arrangement for goats is a major setback. Most farmers have to move long distances to access the markets in an effort to get a good price for the goats. Goats are sold directly to the consumers or to traders who transport them to the urban markets. Market yai. Kulandari ke mukungu ongwa wanu weiza wenga. Chini ni kugosi ndani kwenye ongwa weni ke ndani tumpundu embu. Tuna kuri kwa weni yao kuri kwa koko kwa weni kachini. Kwa kuti ndani ya chini ni yai. But yetu tuna kumona kaya ndo mamen. Chini kaya ndo mane. Kwa mama mno yuko mlaacho. Yamu no muimbo ndani yamu no muimbo yadi sese. Kwa chini wakuto baje baje kuhimbaka. Tumage tari kabu tumpongo. Tari straight kaya ulomu aunka kwa yama midi tatu gatta haba haba mbahi mungi maga tiba haba haba midi tatu haba tu shuporo mungu kwa yako gabe shako tu sambari rampongo pongo yako impongo yiri jisi bi amuro sometimes zibi atristing gambo but mwangu siga kwa yako rusa gambo mwangu sigi rabo ati kama vika mukoro mwavika mukora umana kuvika mukora ati impongo keno ndara sambara ba bo la ba o lata. Mamba mali nyobe himponge husa mpara mali ngoleka musandi sambara baba yata a nyobe katula na ndi misoro customer kali go yanda kuyura mpongo kabotu urayanda kuti fest uya kule midieta amana walongu kuti kauli hoku ya kuli ya so mamba mamito eh eh mamba mito mina baba himwi magat eh so Baba ntuba yaba tuga yaba tuga ta hama ningiwa. On a daily basis, we may receive about 200 to 250 goats. The pricing arrangement is uh, very good. We try to introduce the scale, but farmers are very uncomfortable with that. They would want the negotiation type of it. For with the scale, there's uh, no chanda kutu bida. You know, you maybe you've turned, you've tuned the scale, or you, you've done, you. Uh, you, you want to, to steal from us, so they are very comfortable. There is nothing that we can do. We are moving away from that concept of middlemen. We are also empowering our members by way of assisting them with uh, sm small loans. So yes, the, 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 the production of goods and sheep has not also increased and done well over the years because the marketing structure has not been well organized. But we are hoping right now and you are convinced that with the market access to Saudi Arabia, uh, the production in sheep and goat uh, in Zambia is going to go up. Inadequate and lack of improved goat breeds and poor management practices affect goat production. Ishuwa mpongo ziravula, ayumi zirafuka. Kambu wako vula minsamu, tawe ta kukia ringa tuwa likaya tuwa zijaira mucha anda yunu minsamu tawe pe. Ponya alingo chimichindi, mpongo zgesu. Tazigeba bulu pe. Zibetia wa ini bridi. Tazigeba bulu. Suwe nga kapongo kachidi wa kanyini. Kasi mpata kako menute kakabama geti mpati pe. So tuwa ulo mpako mflumende utindiza nga hatu kwa sirizia. Sebo tuwa bama mpongo zikipati. Zigebe katuwa tuwa kuma geti. Tuwa bama geti mbo. Tanisuwe tuwa bama geti. Most of the farmers during the focus group discussions they would say goats are self-managed. They haven't... Uh, most of them expressed ignorance of uh, some of the management practices that needs to be given to, to goats. So there is need to strengthen uh, the extension services, especially for livestock, and also training of the farmers on some of the best uh, practices that they need to adapt. Then the other issue is uh, establishing of abattoirs or even slab, uh, slaughter slabs. For instance, for goats, when you drive 
going to Siavunga, you find uh, some men are selling goats, goat meat by the by the roadside, and you don't know where those animals are being slaughtered from. So th those issues uh, bring out the issues of uh, the the health is safety for the uh, for the people that are that are eating that are consuming those the animals that are being sold. Where are they being slaughtered from? Have, have they been uh, cleared by the the, the 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 veterinary department? And so such issues need to be looked into. The government has already started that. On top of that, we have a breeding center in Sinazongwe district, uh, Kanchindu Goat Multiplication Center, situated in uh, Chief Member's area, uh, Kanchindu Veterinary Camp. That's where we have that center. So the idea, the objective of the government is that uh, these breeds that we have at the center, over time we pass on to the local farmers, so that we can improve the breed, the, the breed of uh, goats, and then we, through that we can improve the quality of meat and even the size of goats, so that farm, farmers can realize e enough income from the sale of goats. Where goat farming is increasingly becoming prominent among farmers in rural areas, the situation is different with sheep. Although lucrative and fetching good prices on the market, sheep population are seemingly limited, with its farming quite unpopular among smallholders. Sheep is good. The mutton is quite tasty. It's a, it's a delicate thing for many people. You can't fail to, to sell mutton anyway. For those that have tasted mutton, if you haven't, uh, I could do, arrange a small braai for you. The market for sheep is yawning. It's open. But sheep themselves are not easy to look after. If you've had them for two, three months, there's nothing dying. You see them put their heads together like this. They make a circle. And after that, you are rest assured, a week or so, they'll start dying. And we say when they make a circle like that, they are planning how to die. So keeping them in big numbers, my experience is that they, they will soon be prone to some disease. Diseases associated with sheep are a major challenge. Climatic conditions prevailing in some areas are also a prohibiting factor to sheep farming. Yeah, traditionally, we are very, very negligible. I don't think we have anything close to 500 sheep. We have a few in Kaoma. Uh, this is because of the worm burden. Our uh, grazing area here is mainly in the Barossi Plain, in the Zambezi floodplain. Now, Zambezi floodplain has a very huge burden in terms of river fluke. Uh, sheep and river fluke are not very uh, good friends. They really succumb to it. But, of course, other districts upland like Kaoma can take it up. And I'm sure we could also do that. But at the moment, we have very negligible uh, populations of, she of sheep. <laughs> Poultry is also one sector with great opportunities in Zambia. Yes. For the Broilers, right now as a, as a country, we're sitting around 75, 75 million broilers. Uh, and for the layers, uh, as of last year, um, the records that we have as of December 2016, we are sitting at around 2.5 million layers that were produced. Then with the village chickens, the estimate for the country right now is around 23 million, uh, but of course this will need to be updated when we have a comprehensive uh, census, but we have about 23 million um, villain chickens right now as a country. With broiler and layer chicken production on an increase, the sector certainly plays an important role in the income, food and nutrition security. Uh, I think an egg is still on top of the list on uh, nutrition. You have in an egg the whole chicken there. 
and uh, it's even better than soy. We are producing about 150, 150 per day. Selling them, uh, we cover all these areas, Mazabuka, uh, Monza itself, Choma, we go to Namwala, we go to Mamba, just to get rid of these eggs so that we have an income every day. Local free-range chickens, commonly known as village chickens, are becoming on high demand of late. With a striking and profitable price on the market, raiding of village chickens on a large scale is being taken seriously in many rural communities through improved techniques. I saw that there was potential, so I bought two chickens, the females, and then the, the hens and then the cock. Then after that, that's how I started rearing. I started with like a small pottery, but eventually I saw that the production was good. Then I decided now to build a bigger one. Uh, rearing chicken, the opportunities, the good part of it is that it's good because if I have a lot, I can sell. And village chicken, is, it's expensive than the broilers. And also the eggs, it's cheaper for me to get the eggs than for me buying those, um, maybe those ones with chemicals, I would say. Because when I rear them, if they reach almost 100 plus, then I'll start selling the big ones. Normally the main market is the lodges and also in town. Mm -hmm. In town, just at the market, you just take them, people will buy. Some people, they normally come here, they would follow because they've known that I normally rear chickens. The idea was uh, for the group to have an income generating activity. On top of that, to supply the areas around uh, this place in Sesheke with the local chickens because of their nutritional value. People are going the natural way nowadays. So we thought of taking up this opportunity to rear village chickens. As you can see, our position, you could find that we, uh, almost every week people are asking if we're already selling the chickens. Yes. So that itself, in itself can tell that the demand is higher. The prices, they are okay. Yes, compared to other towns. That is 45 kwacha, up to, ranging from 45 kwacha to 50 kwacha, up to 60 kwacha, the, the cocks. If you go to restaurants, you find that uh, they are also preparing pure chicken. And the demand there must be uh, quite good. Because even restaurant owners, you find they, they approach you for supply. We hope to grow so big that we can also supply Namibia with local chickens. I know very well that the lodges and the hotels can be our market. You find that even their selling is more in the informal channel, kind of, as opposed to where you go to a supermarket, you find the broiler is being packaged nicely. Village chickens are not really you are not are rarely found in supermarkets. So this also is one of uh, the problems that farmers face. They can't really sell their livestock at premium price to catch a premium price. They are really selling at low prices compared to other players in the value chain. Outbreaks, such as new castle disease, still remains one of the major challenges affecting poultry farmers. As you can see now at my pottery, it's almost going down because I got discouraged because sometimes you'd keep the old reach maybe 170, but when the new castle or gumboro comes in the infection, it will wipe out maybe 130, 140, which is a big loss. New castle disease is one of the, the diseases that was really prominent uh, among the farmers, which they said is of uh, a big challenge especially occurs between July and August and farmers instead of uh, managing the uh, controlling the diseases most of them just end up uh, they don't do anything if they are they are just waiting for governments to come in and uh, and help with the situation so most of them tend to sell their to sell their their their, their village chickens when it's about to approach that 
that period when there is high incidences of Newcastle. Then others, have, they tend to eat even the, the diseased uh, chickens, which is also a risk on their health. Veterinary officers actually have done well from inception until of late, or should I say until this year because we have been surprised with the type of figures that come from there. That should provide a free service to the emerging or even traditional uh, farmers around. The fees have gone up more than, should I say, more than 200%. Uh, uh, like taking a chicken to the vet for post-mortem. Hmm? 50 kwacha for post-mortem of a chicken. You can't sell a live chicken at 50 kwacha. This is when they retire. You can't. Among other challenges in the poultry farming is the high price of feed. The cost of feed has gone up so much. And the cost of fuel, you know, last year this time, we were actually selling the eggs for a better price, 28 kwacha. Now we are selling for 27 kwacha a tray. So, you know, like the old English saying, uh, which says uh, that, uh, you know, the price of everything goes up except price of eggs. So there's a bit of, comp or actually a very stiff competition in the selling of eggs. The thing that has brought us down also are the bank rates borrowing at, uh, from the bank. The bank rates have gone up so much that we can't go to the bank now to borrow. Just like sheep, goats and poultry, piggery is another sector with great potential for growth. Pigs are separate on their own. They belong to a different family. Uh, of, of livestock. Um, these um, uh, pigs have a different uh, peculiar, even in the grazing uh, pattern, the way they feed. And um, they belong to the, the family, the swine family, which is both the, 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 the wild, like you find in Eastern Province, and all the black, the black, um, uh, pigs um, but also we also have the exotic ones which is available mostly in, in, in the white ones these are different breeds which are basically bred for for meat for white meat uh, the goats and sheep give us what we call red meat but the pigs produce uh, white meat which is the same as what you get from fish and uh, and chickens so the updated figure right now uh, with the current uh, estimate we are around 3 million um, uh, pigs as a country. According to the Rural Agriculture Livelihood Survey 2015, Zambia's pig population stands at about 900,000. Due to increased demand for pork and pork products, pig production in Zambia is slowly increasing with more farmers venturing into piggery. I've been motivated to go into piggery because of many things. Uh, I'm one person who has enjoyed eating bacon, sausage, and pork chops. And I do a lot of cooking from the white meat of pork itself. Uh, when you look at the activities of my fish ponds, the manure automatically drops into the water and uh, that helps with the algae and improves the fish feed. So far I've got about 200 pigs, but uh, that's the beginning. You can look at real meat, such big businessmen like real meat, it's all over. And we can become like them. It is very profitable because you can take it to a higher grade of making your own sausages and processing everything that you want to make. Polonies, all these other things you see, 
the corned beefs, most of them are mixed with pork meat. Every individual is eating every day. I think each family eats about a kilo per day of either beef, pork, fish, even vegetables. So I do not agree with a number of people who say there's no money in agriculture because everybody ends up eating agriculture. But the sector is also not free of setbacks. Last time we had one which, which got sick and we, we're not sure what, what was the disease about. We have that challenge of feeding them because he, it's more like the more they grow, the more they want to eat. For most of the um, uh, diseases in, uh, in swine, uh, if we talk about the pigs, we lost numbers from 2013, 2014 when we had the African swine fever outbreak. Our numbers uh, went down. In order to develop the small livestock sector, critical areas such as farmer training, extension services provision, disease control, market infrastructure, and provision of credit facilities to farmers need to be enhanced. These services, even taking blood samples, we should go to Lusaka. Why don't we do it here in Choma? There is, a, I think they are building a, a, a lab there, but for how long? Maybe the road from Sorezi to, uh, to whatever will be soon done and that laboratory is still standing, unequipped. There's more emphasis in consumption than there is in production. What we're looking at right now is an aggressive program so that we look at the comparative advantage of different parts of Zambia so that we can increase the, the numbers. And from the, our part is to ensure that the disease control approach, the vaccinations for these uh, animals are uh, spot on and are on schedule. Um, the other interventions which the farmers have to do on their own, the issue of supplementary feeding and all those, so that everything comes together and we increase the numbers. But generally, the numbers across spectrum are on the, on the increase. And with the increased demand for the, for the goats, with the um, market access that we, uh, um, the government has obtained for, for Saudi Arabia, we have seen a lot of interest from uh, different uh, sections of uh, our society. Mm -hmm.